3, 7 through 12. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie, Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, and try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. Hallelujah. Father, we love you, God, today. And we thank you, Lord, for the presence of the Holy Ghost that we feel in the house of God today. I know, Lord, today that some of the statements I've made thus far may seem disjointed. They almost may seem out of place, but in my spirit I know they're not. I know that it was divinely ordained for God. Uh, you put an urgency in my heart to speak certain things, and there are times when I can no more control what I have to say than I can control the flow of the mighty Mississippi. And today, Lord, you've caused me to say things and share things that I know the people of God needed to hear. But right now, Lord, you've laid a word of exhortation upon my heart, and I ask you, God, to help me to succinctly deliver this word to your people that they might be blessed, helped, and encouraged thereby. Anoint every word and anoint every ear that we might hear and receive that which the Spirit of God would speak unto the church. We ask it today in that blessed name, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated this afternoon. And amen. If there is any part of the book of Revelation that I believe really applies to the LGBT Christian community, I believe it is this portion which I've read to you today. If you think about it in that context and then read it, under the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth. Aren't you glad today? When God opens a door, there isn't a man on this planet who can close it. Hallelujah. And aren't you glad today when you need to be in a place of safety, when you need to be in a place of refuge, that when God shuts the door, no man can open it. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, when God shut the door of the ark, that door was shut. Nobody got on the boat that didn't help build it. God said, you know what? You ain't going to crawl up on this thing at the last minute. You ain't going to get on it because all of a sudden you see the trouble manifesting itself. I've been prophetically declaring in this church for year after year after year that all hell was about to break loose in America and we were about to see things happen like we had never seen before and we needed to make ourselves ready because things were going to get bad. And by the the time it was over, I said over and over again, by the time it was over, we may no longer even have a democracy. 
we may instead be under a dictatorship. The best we can pray for is a benevolent dictatorship. What I mean by that is the best we can pray for is that when this dictatorship takes hold, that the right person will be in position and it'll be someone who has compassion and someone. Let me tell you something, honey. Donald Trump may start the war, but that doesn't mean Donald Trump will win it. Hallelujah. Did you? Ooh, how, ooh, mm. Are you hearing what I said? I said Donald Trump may start the war, but Donald Trump may not win it. So don't think that just because he's about to break this country in half. The South broke this country in half 200 years ago. They tried to, to break this country in half, didn't they? They tried to break it in two. But you know what? They lost the war. So just because somebody starts a war doesn't mean they're going to win the war. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? Just because these white supremacists, just because these racists, just because these neo-Nazis are wanting to start a war to divide our country and to destroy our democracy doesn't mean, Martin, they're going to win the war. Now things may change after. There may be changes. We may not have a democracy when it's all over. It may very well be a dictatorship. But you know what? If it's a dictatorship with Hillary in charge versus a dictatorship with, with uh, Trump in charge, I think I can live with that a little better, don't you? Yeah. It could happen. Don't kid yourself. If you remember, pardon me, should have worn suspenders. <laughs> Preachers lost a little weight. I told Martin the other day, I said, I love using the restroom these days. All I got to do is undo my belt and let my pants fall. Because, man, I'm telling you, that's all I got to do. I don't have to worry about undoing the, the buttons or the nothing. I just let them fall. I'm ready to rock and roll. <laughs> Amen. I've been warning people this was coming. If you'd been part of this local church, you'd have heard those warnings. But see, I'm not out there online telling all this. I'm not sharing all this stuff online because, number one, half of y'all wouldn't listen to me anyway. So God said, don't bother. If God instructed me to put it online, I'd put it online, but I haven't. But you know what? When the storm finally hits, there's only so many of us that have been part of this church who've actually put forth the effort to support this church who are going to get on that ark, honey. Don't think you're going to run down here and jump on the boat after all hell breaks loose because it ain't going to happen. Only those who helped build the ark got on the ark. See, if God spoke to you two, three, four years ago to come to Dallas and be part of this church, you could have helped us build the ark. But oh no, you didn't want to listen to God. You didn't want to obey God. Well, that's all well and good. When, when it comes time for that ark to float, baby, the only people on it are going to be the people who helped build it. Because when God shuts the door, that door is shut. Hello now. The Lord said, I open doors and that door stays open. Nobody can, open, can shut that door. He said, but when I close the door, that door is closed. And nobody's going to get in after I've closed the door. But listen to this. Tell me this doesn't apply to you and I today and to many in the LGBT Christian community. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Verse 8. I know thy works. I know your effort. I know your deeds. I know your actions. I know you've been going to church. I know you've been praying. I know you've been trying to walk in relationship with me. I know you've been trying to do what pleases me. I know you've been trying to be a witness and a testimony to an unsaved world. I know you've been trying to live holy and godly within the context of who you are. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. Woo! God's grace says you're welcome. And guess what? It don't matter what T.D. Jake says. It don't matter what Jimmy Swigert says. It don't matter what Ron Parsley says. It don't matter what Franklin Graham says. It don't matter what uh, Family Affair, whatever that idiotic ministry in Colorado says. The bottom line is God said, I open the door and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength. 
how many of us in this room today, when it comes to our faith and walk with God, we feel like our strength is, is tested to the limits. How many of us in this room today feel like we have as little strength as we've ever had and has kept my word? And hast not denied my name. Oh, hallelujah. There may be a lot of churches in the LGBT community that preach all kinds of messages in an effort to get people to fill the pews and fill the offering place. But this little church in Dallas, Texas, preaches the Jesus name message. We still preach Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For the remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We have not denied his name. We're still preaching the Jesus name message. We're still preaching the one God message. It doesn't matter. Oh, we'd love to see this building filled up with people, but we will not fill it by denying his name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm not going to water this thing down just to get people in the building. That's how MCC built their entire denomination. There, I said it. Watered it down till just so they could get people through the doors. Now, I, I know at heart they meant well. They meant to help people find God. I, I understand. I'm not trying to minimize what they did. But I am trying to tell you that their methodology was wrong. You don't compromise what you know in order to get people, even if your intentions are good. Has not denied my name. Verse 9. Behold, this, oh, here's a promise. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Oh, my goodness. I'm here to tell you today, not every animal in the barn is a cow. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> not everything with a, mo with a motor on it in the garage is a lawnmower either. No, you've got cars in there. You've got weed eaters in there. I'm here to tell you, not every person in the church is a Christian. Oh, there are so many people in our community get discouraged and beaten and they lose out in their relationship with God. They lose out in their walk with God, Lisa, all because of somebody. All because of some person. And what they don't understand is that person is of the synagogue of Satan. They say they are a Jew and they are not. Hallelujah. They say they're a Christian and they are not. Honey, I don't care how popular a preacher's become. I don't care how much money he makes. I don't care how big a ministry he's got or how many television cameras he's got focused on him at any one given time. The truth of the matter is, if your message is wrong, you're not part of the right church. I don't care about all these big name preachers. I don't care about what they have to say. I couldn't give a fig about one word comes out of Franklin Graham's mouth. Yet I see people in the LGBT community on Facebook all the time griping and groaning because Franklin Graham said this or that preacher said that. Who cares? Who cares? Paul declared that during his life and ministry, he oftentimes suffered at the hands of what he called, uh, yeah, he did. Can't think of the word now. Anyway, brethren who were not really brethren. False brethren. There you go. Paul said he suffered at the hands of false brethren. They were in the church building, but they were not in the church body. Do you hear what I'm telling you today? Honey, I got news for you. There are a lot of preachers in pulpits who are in the church building, but they're not part of the church body. They claim to be a Jew, but they're not. Jesus said they claim one thing, but they're not what they claim. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? They are, in fact, of the synagogue of Satan. They are of the assembly of Satan. They're sitting in the assemblies of God's church, but they're of the assembly of Satan. 
Satan. They're sitting in the church of God's church, but they're of the church of Satan. They're sitting in the church of Christ, but they're really from the church of Satan. There are many false brethren in the church. The word of God said in the last days there would arise many false prophets. What's wrong with you people? You say you believe the word of God, but you don't. Well, how do I know you're not the false preacher? How do I know you're not the false prophet? Well, I'll tell you what the test is. Are they preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified? Or are they preaching uh, abortion? Are they preaching anti-LGBT? Are they preaching against all kinds of things? Are they spending more time telling you you're going to hell than trying to help you make heaven? Because I'll tell you what, you know the true church by being the church that preaches grace. You know the true church is the church that preaches love. You know the true church is the church that tries to help you make heaven. You know the true church is the church that lifts up Jesus' name. You know the true church is the church that preaches the message of salvation. Hello now. Put us to the test. I don't mind. Put us to the test. Johnny, I, I'll stand up to anybody anywhere. Put us to the test. You compare us to the word of God. Compare us to the Word of God. Compare us to how God describes His church. He said, they shall know you are my disciples by your love. Go ahead, put us to the test. You don't see us out there at the Trump rallies worshiping Donald Trump. No, you see us in the church house worshiping King Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead, put us to the test. I don't mind. I know good and well we'll pass with flying colors. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Listen to this. I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them, listen to this, to come and worship before thy feet. When it's all said and done, honey, they're going to come and they're going to be applauding us for what we've done. They're going to be saying, you know what? We did it wrong. You did it right. Hallelujah. We had it wrong. You had it right. We believed it wrong. You believed it right. Glory to God. Listen, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. Listen, and to know that I have loved thee. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, the day is coming when old Rod Parsley's going to know that God has loved the LGBT community. The day is coming when old Franklin Graham is going to know that God has loved the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. The day is coming when that old demonic Baptist church runs around with all their picket signs. God hates queers. God hates this. God hates that. Those fools are going to know that God loved the LGBT community. How do I know? Because God's promised it right here. So I'm going to make them come worship at your feet and to know that I have loved thee. Why? Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. What does that mean? That means you followed my advice. What was my advice? Be patient. The word of my patience. That's what the Lord said. He said, you've kept my advice. What does Paul say? He said, run with what? Patience. The race that is set before thee. Isn't that what he said? The Lord said, you know why I'm going to have them fools come worship at your feet? You know why I'm going to have them know that I've loved you? I'll tell you how I'm going to let you, uh, how that's going to happen. Because you have been patient like I told you to be patient. Oh, Martin, I've gotten so discouraged doing this work so many times. You think I don't know I could fill this church up tomorrow if I just water our message down and if I just take on the doctrine of some old uh, Trinitarian charismatic church. You think I don't know that I could fill this building? Honey, I know all the tricks. I've seen preachers that no more loved God, no more served God, no more cared about God who were in ministry for the money. I've seen them and I've watched them fill up buildings because all they're interested in is the money that comes in. 
If there's anybody stupid enough out there to think this pastor is in this work for the money, if you're dumb enough to think that, then I challenge you today to explain to me how it is that for 17 nearly years I've been in Dallas, Texas, and I have struggled, 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 and I have put myself out there financially on behalf of this work to keep it going and to keep it alive for all these years. I have not received one nickel in pay. So if you think I'm in this for the money, you're out of your bloody stinking tree. You know how many times, Johnny, I, I thought about quitting. You know how many times I thought about stopping. But then the Holy Ghost come and give me a word of advice and said, be patient. Be patient. There's somebody's life out there that I want to touch. See, there's a fellow out there named Martin. You don't know him yet. But I want you to be there for him. There's some fellas I know named Johnny and another fellow named Bill. They've been together for a lot of years. I want you to be there for them. Tommy needs you to be there for him. There's a lady named Lisa. She needs you to be there for him. Tammy, Rose, I could go down the list of names. I need you to be there for Just be patient. Don't worry about how many people you got in the building. Just worry about the message you preach. Because whether you have many or few, I want you to preach it true. Whether you have many or true, I want you to preach it straight. Whether you have many or true, I want you to preach the one God, Jesus name, apostolic message without compromise. Okay, Lord, I'm going to try. I'm going to tell you something. I've learned patience in the last many years. I didn't come into it with it. <laughs> no, sir. It used to be if I wasn't successful, and I mean wildly successful. If I wasn't wildly successful pretty much off the starting line, I was ready to quit in a hurry because this boy, I have a thing about not doing well at what I'm doing. Martin, you know what I'm talking about? I've got a thing about it, Johnny. My whole life, if I put my hand to something, I, I give it everything I've got and usually it's been very successful. When I started my first church, we went from me, myself, and I, I call that the Holy Trinity, to about 100 people in our first year. My second church, we were on the same track of growth. My third church, we were on the same track of growth. Then I came out and I started a firming ministry, and guess what? Ever since then, it has just been one brick wall after another brick wall after another brick wall after another brick wall, and I'm convinced today, I've said it a hundred times today alone, I'm convinced it's because people are not obeying the voice of God. I'm absolutely convinced of that. If everybody would obey the voice of God, we'd have the resources we need, and we'd have the people. If we had the people and we had the resources, guess what? We could be in the area we need to be in. And then we would shake this city right down to its core. This church, I'm going to tell you, the revival that I see in my mind and in my spirit that God wants to pour out through this church. Notice I didn't say on this church. I said through this church. He doesn't want to just give our church revival. He wants to give the whole of Dallas County a revival. But guess what? I believe the key to that revival is Grace Oasis, the one church in Christ Jesus. I absolutely believe that. You know why? Because most churches in the the mainstream today are so busy fighting culture wars and worshiping at the throne of Donald Trump that they're not even praying for revival anymore. I know a church that is. I know a pastor that is. I know a preacher who still believes in the old time. Pentecostal move of God who still believes that fire can fall from heaven who still believes that the Holy Ghost can descend like a sheet of glory upon a body of God's people I know a preacher who still believes in the old time way and he's praying for revival and I'm here to tell you my Bible he Ooh, glory my Bible said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much 
See, I don't believe you got to have the majority doing the right thing. I believe all you need is one. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God will find that one. He found Abraham, didn't he? Glory to God. God will find that one. He found Lot, didn't he? Oh, my Lord. God will find that one. Almost done today. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. He's talking about tribulation. More specifically, he is talking about the second half of the tribulation. More specifically, he is talking about the rapture. He says, I'll take you home before the tribulation comes upon the world. You're going to be saved, folks. You're going to be ready for heaven. You're going to be rapture ready. You're going to be ready to be snatched up and taken out of this mess before all hell breaks loose and the Antichrist reveals his true nature. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast. You got the truth? Hold on to the truth. You got the right message? Hold on to the right message. You got the right spirit? Hold on to the right spirit. You got the right vision? Hold on to the right vision. Why? That no man take thy crown. And I'm going to close with this today. Too many people in our community are going to miss heaven. Too many people in our community are living lives that are cursed, that are literally cursed. They're, they're experiencing not just negativity, but they're experiencing the worst of the worst. Because the Bible said, if you've ever known this truth and you walk away from it, it's better that a millstone be tied about your neck and you be cast into the sea. Isn't that what he said? Now, does that mean because God is going to just make your life miserable? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. God's not the one making your life better. Enemy's the one making your life miserable. But I'm going to tell you something. There ain't nothing make the devil happier than vexing somebody who once served God. There ain't nothing makes the devil happier than making somebody who once served God miserable. Why? Because that's him celebrating your downfall. That's him celebrating your lost connection. You see, while you're living for God, you've got, that, you've got that protection around you. You've got that hedge. The Word of God said that the angels of the Lord encamp round about them that fear him. Well, you quit fearing God. You quit serving God. You quit walking with God. Guess what? You're going through life without an angelic escort. You no longer have that hedge. Now the enemy can bring all kinds of junk upon you. You wonder why you're addicted to drugs. You wonder why you're addicted to sex. You wonder why you're overcome by alcohol addiction. You wonder why you're living in some scummy old apartment. You wonder why you can't get and keep a relationship. You wonder why you're always heartbroken. Honey, it ain't God vexing you. You're living a cursed life, but God don't curse people. The enemy does. And the enemy takes no greater joy than vexing somebody who once walked with God. Look at the prodigal son. He was living a life that he never dreamed he'd be living. Here he is going from being a rich man's son to being a feeder of hogs. And he has so little resources available to him. The Bible said he spent all the inheritance his father gave him on wild living. Probably gambling, probably whores, probably prostitutes, probably uh, drugs. You know, you know how things go. It's funny how all the things the devil likes to vex us with cost lots of money. You ever notice that? The enemy never vexes us with anything that's free. But the interesting thing is the word of God said, God hath given us all things to enjoy. So everything God gives us to enjoy is free. All I got to do is step out on the porch of my little cabin in the woods and look up toward the sunset and it's gorgeous and it's relaxing and it's calming and it's free. Hello now. Am I telling the truth? Peace is free. Peace is free. Joy is free. Victory is free. Power is free.
Glory to God. I want to tell you today, folks, don't let any man take your crown. Nobody leaves the church, Johnny, because of something. They usually leave it because of someone. Nobody leaves the church because something happened. No, it's usually because someone did something. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? And the Word of God tells us you cannot afford to allow any man to take your crown. Quit loosening out with God. Is that uh, lens open? I can't tell from here. It's out of room. Oh, okay. Don't let any man take your crown. You can't afford to lose out on eternity. You cannot afford to lose out on the blessings of walking with God all because of somebody who was in the church who wasn't part of the church. You understand what I'm telling you today? Don't you ever let anyone take your crown. Because, honey, anybody who's shopping for your crown is not anybody who is serving our God. Everybody that serves our God is seeking only to receive their own crown. I don't want yours. I want mine. Hallelujah. To him that overcometh, the word of God said, he will give us a crown of life that will never pass away. Glory to God. I just want my crown. Hallelujah. I don't need yours. You don't need mine. You worry about getting yours, I'll worry about getting mine, and we'll all get ours together. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me today?